This is the Gopher Puck Live podcast, episode number 13, recorded Tuesday, January 17th, 2012. Welcome to the Gopher Puck Live podcast. Along with Hammy, I am your host, Jupiter. Ryan Cardinal could not make the podcast tonight, but he's got a pretty good excuse. Ryan became a father early this morning to a bouncing baby boy. Braden Cardinal, born at 1.16 a.m. this morning, 9 pounds, 1 ounce, big boy, 22 inches long. What do you think of that, Hammy? Sounds like a future gopher player. <laughs> Actually, I think he was saying it was a future Blaze defenseman with his size. <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, Ryan's wife, Tiffany, and the baby are all doing well, of course. So big congratulations to Ryan and Tiffany. Uh, their lives will never be the same, will they, Hammy? <laughs> I wouldn't know that one. I don't have kids well, yet give at this it time. point. But uh, I'll assume. I'll assume. We'll see how much he changes this next week if we hear the crying baby in the background and, and whatnot. And things. He might be the one who's crying. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, give it some time. Give it some time. I, I heard it was over 24 hours of labor. Oof. So uh, he's going to put in, have to put in some triple duty in the next few days to stay on her good side. Definitely. Just a reminder, uh, we do record these podcasts live every Tuesday night just after 9.30 p.m. So if you head over to the GPL podcast page, uh, you can listen to us there or else, you know, you can also, well, while we're recording, you can also send us, uh, you know, questions to Twitter, you know, at Gopher Puck Live on the Twitter or via the podcast email at podcast at gopherpucklive.com. So, Hammy, it was an interesting weekend, a split up in uh, North Dakota, which it's not hard to complain about. I mean, they played, I think they played decent, you know, Friday night. They just didn't get the scoring they would like to. And then Saturday night, they kind of got things together and played much better. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree with you. I, you know, I, it was funny. I looked on GPL after Friday night's game, and of course, you know, the typical meltdown mode after a loss that goes on there. And <laughs> Every time, everybody, yeah, and you know, I just, I don't blame everybody, you know, because of course everybody wants to win every game, but uh, I was just kind of like, okay, everybody, calm down. You know, the Mike Tice, calm down. You know, and. Uh, <laughs> I didn't think they played that badly on Friday. Of course, you know, they didn't bring their A game or maybe not even their necessarily their B game. Um, I, but I didn't think they played badly. I mean, you know, you go to Grand Forks, it's going to be a tough place to play, even if UND is down a bit. Uh, you know, they're going to give you all you, you can handle, and uh, you kind of kind of have to expect that it's going to be a tough game. And I think that, uh, you know, that if you're going into a game 1-1 one, one late on the road, especially at Grand Forks, you kind of have to say, well, we, you know, I couldn't have played that badly. It's not like, you know, we're down two, three, four goals or whatever. I mean, that's a bad performance. But um, all, all things considered, I didn't think Friday night was quite as bad as a lot of people were making it out to be at the time. And then, uh, yeah, they definitely had a nice rebound game on Saturday. I uh, came out and uh, scored some uh, goals in the first. Uh, Bukestad was, of course, very important to get uh, him on the board. And, uh, you know, it just seemed kind of just – you know, that early second period just snowballed, and uh, you know you're kind of wondering, you know, is this going to be a complete blowout? But you kind of know that UND is going to, you know, I was saying, you know, that when it got to be four to two, it was like, okay, if uh, they score one more goal, it could get real dicey. And mm-hmm, so that mm-hmm. that fifth goal that we got, you know, at the end of the second period, I was like, that was a real big one because I was like, if you go into the third. You know, up two goals compared to three in Grand Forks. That you know, it can get dicey. So uh, you know, that was a huge goal and uh, certainly a big win. Well, I I also think that like you said, the late goal in the second period and the late goal in the first. It seems like they haven't been doing that much lately, and it did put uh, North Dakota on their heels quite a bit. Well, yeah, I mean, they always you know, it's kind of cliche, but they always talk about you know scoring goals that you know in the last minute of the of a period yep. or. You know, it's kind of like the two-minute drill in football. You know, you, you just, it kind of gives you that momentum for, you know, the second half or, in this case, the next period. And uh, yeah, that definitely kind of carried over in, that, you know, that first to second period. And then, uh, yeah, that late goal, uh, you know, it's kind of a backbreaker in, uh, you know, in the second period. I would late. agree. And I, yeah. Yeah, I think – I just think that uh, – 
it kind of sucked the momentum out of North Dakota and their their fans, you know, to be back down three goals again. And because you know the, the Gophers have been a third period team all year long, and uh, even if they're on the road, they've still been very strong in a third period. And you don't just, you know expect that they're going to give up three goals. So it kind of you know that kind of I think uh, was the one that broke their back. And then of course, following the game in the handshake line, we had a little. Incident with Ben Blood, Kyle Rao, and uh, Ambrose the Rescue. Uh, let's let's take a listen to Wally Shaver calling it as it happened Saturday night. And now Blood is taking a poke at Ambrose. Took one at Rao, and now Ambrose is wrestling down to the ice with that lunkhead Ben Blood. <laughs> he started it. He threw a shot at Rao, and we almost have a bench clearing brawl. And now Parks is grabbing onto one of the Gophers. It's Travis Boyd down there. What a dumb, stupid thing to what do. What an idiot Ben Blood is. I hope there is some league repercussion on this. And to answer your question initially, Frank, it is a cheap move by Blood to fire that shot at the end of the game. Absorb the loss. It's over. And then he goes and throws a punch at Rao and then gets... I'm glad by Ambrose lined up right behind Rao. What a bunch of cheap hoseheads. That's an accurate description. <laughs> it's just, yeah, just a bunch of hose heads. I'm glad we're done with these guys. Go form your own league. <laughs> Wally with some comedy gold there. And that's the thanks to uh, Learfield and ESPN 1500. You can hear, hear some guys laughing in the background. That was off their broadcast uh, Monday morning. And uh, I didn't hear it until then. And, boy. I think we've got a new nickname for the Fighting Sioux, the Hoseheads. Maybe they can get Hosehead from uh, Strange Brew, a little dog with a little skunk tail going down the back. <laughs> they got a new nickname right there, the Hoseheads, the Fighting Hoseheads. Yeah, I don't know how much they're going to appreciate that one. So <laughs> I don't know that that's going to catch on, at least not up in Grand Forks at one. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, at that topic has been kind of beating to death on Twitter and oh, the message yeah. boards. You know, I mean... It's unfortunate. I mean, they, you know, it was embarrassing. You know, I, you know, you don't typically feel embarrassed for the other team or for their, mm-hmm. you know, one of their captains. But this was a case where I'm like, you know, not only did I thought it was Bush League, but I was kind of embarrassed for the guy because I'm like, look, first of all, you know, it's a handshake line. And it's kind of like if the NHL guys can fight for, you know, seven games in a play- hard fought playoff series and, you know, gather their wits and shake hands at the end and no problems. There shouldn't be any problem. Now, granted, we're talking younger kids and whatever, and they're, maybe their emotions aren't quite as stable. But nonetheless, you know, you, you kind of have to put yourself above that. And, you know, he's one of their team leaders. And you just kind of say to yourself, you know, not to mention, I saw somebody mention on Twitter, you know, tonight that, uh, you know, Ben Blood's, you know, 6'4", 220 or whatever, and – and how are you going to live it down that you're picking on a guy who's five eight, you know, a buck seventy or whatever? It's like, you know, it just is kind of like, you know, if you're going to be a man about it and do that kind of stuff, uh, you know, maybe you want to try the next guy in line, which was Ambrose or one of the, you know, what I mean, somebody that's a little bit of an equal uh, equal stand. So I, I don't know, it, but nonetheless, you know, they apologized and and uh, you know, you got his assistant captain uh, tag strip for him, which I, you know, thought was, you know, probably a good thing to do for Hackstall, you know, to show that uh, he's not going to accept that kind of behavior. So you have to give him credit for that, yes. but it's, yeah, it's I, too bad it happened. Well, it was definitely an internet sensation. You know, I posted that video Saturday night and there's already 56,000 views of it on YouTube. Wow. Really? Yeah. I, didn't, I, yeah. I was, I was notified of that this afternoon. I'm like, Holy buckets. It was, it was just under 56,000 views. So uh, apparently, a lot of people out there were checking it out. You should have run a little commercial at the yeah, end of that well, one. You would have some pay on. Who knows? Who knows? Or at the beginning, I guess I should say. Yeah. But one thing I noticed, I thought was good out this weekend, besides the split, is that it seems like the past three, four, five years, um, Minnesota has been North Dakota's launch on their second half. It seems like they get Minnesota, all of a sudden they start really playing well in the second half of the season. They're off and running. Do you think that's going to happen this year, or do you think it's going to be a little more difficult for them to uh, get that second half launch? I mean, look at right now, Michigan Tech is still in front of them in the standings by a point, but, you know, Michigan Tech is still there. And right now, if the playoffs started today and they don't, uh, 
they would be going to Michigan Tech for the WCHA playoffs. Well, yeah, I mean, I've been saying it for, you know, the better part of the last month, you know, two months that, that I don't think this is going to be one of those typical UND years where they're going to have this big second half rally. Um, you know, I've been saying that for a, a while now. And, and you know, I, I to be fair, you know, a big part of it, of course, is they're, they've been really, you know, hit hard with the injury bug. I mean, it looks like, you know, coming out of this Gopher series, you know, they had a... Let's see. It was a Parks was a little dinged up, and I th- I'm assuming he's questionable. And it sounds like uh, that Brennan O'Connell is out, you know. And so you add those to the injuries they've already had, and so I, I really, honestly, have a hard time seeing where this is going to suddenly be, you know, uh, like past years. Where I mean, let's face it, they, they're not even close to what they were last year. I mean, they had a pretty stacked team last year, and you know, they could uh, pretty much out talent teams last year in many cases, and. They're not going to have that luxury this year. They're playing some guys that they probably normally wouldn't be expecting to play. You know, they'd be up in the stands or whatever. And uh, I just have a hard time seeing it. I I haven't looked at closely at their schedule, but I know they're at St. Cloud this week and it's, uh, you know, they're going to have a a tough go of it. So I I don't know that this is going to be one of those, you know, typical hack style second half teams where they're going to just, you know, kind of roll through, uh, you know, teams and, and suddenly you see them in the top, you know, three or four of the league and they're, you know, in the NCAA. Is it, you know, I just, I have a hard time seeing it this year. Well, I guess time will tell. Well, I mean, they, they do play, they're at UMD yet. They, they're at Denver yet. They're at St. Cloud, which, you know, St. Cloud's playing a little better lately. Um, you know, they have some easier home series and Wisconsin's been brutal on the road. So, and they have tech at home. Tech's been, you know, pretty solid and, they got uh, Mankato at home, so I mean they have some winnable series, but it's not like they have this, you know, easy second half. So I have a hard time seeing it. Well, one other thing I wanted to talk about this weekend was the check from behinds. Obviously, you had Chris Dell Friday night, you had Alt Saturday night, and you could have called. Uh, who else could have gotten called Saturday as well? Territory. Territory. I don't care who they are, or what team they're playing for. It's getting ridiculous. I think Territory could have been for five. Um, I, I don't have a problem with these refs giving them five now because it's it's just got to stop. It's getting out of hand. And maybe they do need to change the rules and maybe make it more like a fighting rule where if you f- check from behind and you get the major call, you're out the next game. And then if you do it again, you're out for two games and so on and so on. There needs to be more deterrent because some of these guys are just missing the game and then, boom, Crystal's back Saturday. Alt's going to be back Friday night. I I think they might need to get a little more strict on what's going on because it's getting out of hand. Well, I agree. And I mean, I was actually, you know, I didn't know if you were going to bring this up at all tonight, but I, you know, I was thinking about it earlier today and um, maybe it was after I looked at the video of Saratori's hit. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, you know, none of those three hits in my opinion were even questionable. I mean, to me, I mean, even, mm-hmm. you know, Saratori didn't get called, but to me that should have been, you know, a five minute check from behind. And um, Alts wasn't questionable and Crystal's definitely wasn't, I mean, it wasn't like one of those where you, sometimes you see a guy just turn at the very last second and, and, you know, you catch him from behind and, um, you know, in those instances, sometimes, you know, the, the player with the puck has to be a little bit responsible and realize that they have their own, you know, they can't put themselves at danger and suddenly just turn at the last second and get hit, you know, so sometimes you understand that, you know, a check from behind, can happen under those circumstances and it's not necessarily, you know, where somebody's just trying to kill the other guy. But uh, in these three instances, you know, it definitely wasn't even a questionable situation. And you, you know, I said it on uh, GPL. I think I said it to me, it's a gutless play anyways. I don't care if it's a gopher or whoever, you know, the guy's defenseless, you know, it's just kind of, you know, it's like sucker punching somebody essentially. It's just, it's kind of a gutless play. It's like, I understand that guys are going full bore and they're trying to, you know, they're trying to do whatever they can to help their team win. But, you know, at some point you have to look at the other team and the other player and say, Hey, that's a, that's a person, you know, they got a life. It's not just about the game or whatever. And, uh, you know, I know it, maybe it's a little hard to take uh, that, that competitive mentality out of it, you know, at, in those moments, but, you know, they are people, you know, and they have a life. So you kind of have to be a little more careful and yeah, I do think it's getting worse and they do need to kind of crank up the, uh, you know, some of the penalties on these guys. 
So what about the physical play overall? I mean, do you think they need to crack down on some of those rules? I mean, there's there's a rule of hitting somebody after they've passed the puck. I believe it's by the time the other guy has caught the pass, you can't hit the guy. Um, sometimes it's a short pass, sometimes it's a long pass. Do you think that the players are taking advantage of that rule a little too much? I mean, there's a lot of times the puck is long gone, and these guys are nailing somebody up against the boards, taking them out. Do you think they need to tweak that rule a little bit? I mean, they're hitting just to hit. I don't know if it's really that needed when the puck's already gone. Yeah, it's a tough one because, you know, the more you, you know, you kind of say to yourself, sometimes we get so frustrated with referees as it is because you don't know what is or isn't a penalty. And you start saying, okay, well, what's, you know, what's a penalty? Is it, oh, it's one step after the guys pass the puck or, you know, I, I understand where you're coming from, but it's a tough one to decide. I read, uh, you know, a Let's Play Hockey article after, uh, you know, some of the tragic events lately of, you know, checking from by in high school happened. And, you know, the, the writer was advocating, you know, basically taking hitting out of the game, period, you know. No, no, and I'm no, like, no, no. Can't yeah, have that. And I, yeah, I mean, he was like, you know, I think I don't remember the exact arguments, but, you know, it's essentially, you know, it's a skill game. Let's focus on the skill and all that. And I'm like, well, you know, that that's a great thought, but you're it just doesn't make sense in hockey. You just have to have players be taught what's a more responsible way of playing the game. And, you know, whether it's the hitting from behind stuff or whether, you know, it, it's, you know, I mean, yeah, you shouldn't be – Kidding guy. I, I just think the mentality. I, mean, I remember when I played, you know, I, sometimes when you're that age, you just kind of lose sight of the big picture and you just kind of want to get back at somebody for something they did. I remember getting uh, what uh, I think I got speared one time in a hockey game and I, you know, I remembered who did it. And I remember that I just was out for blood, you know, in that game just to launch myself at that guy when I had the opportunity. And I did, you know, I got him a clean hit, but nonetheless, you know, you players get that mentality and uh you know you kind of just have to hope that as time goes along they can teach uh, players to maybe chill out a bit on that stuff what about going to half shields i know some of the coaches Uh, some of the coaches kind of like going to a half shield so the sticks will probably stay down and maybe those hits will also stay down as well well i i really don't have a problem with the whole half shield thing i mean these guys a lot of most of these guys come from junior hockey you know anyways and they Mm -hmm. wear half shields there so to go from you know, it's like, well, you know, why is it that it has to be one level down? You're essentially playing with half shields, and you go up, and you have to protect everybody with a full shield. I mean, I don't know. I think they should go to half shields, but I understand the liability stuff and all that other kind of, you know, they have to think about that stuff. But to me, yeah, I wouldn't have a problem with that. Whether it would have a, a major effect, I, you know, it's hard to say. I mean, you still see guys in NHL trying to kill each other. and Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I I, to me, it's, it's a sport, you know, the whole, the entire sport has gotten too caught up in the violent aspect of the game. I mean, I, you know, after what we saw happen to Bugard, you know, and, uh, you know, with the fighting and I think they should outlaw fighting in the NHL. I mean, I know that's not popular up in Canada probably, and maybe even some America, but I was looking the other night at, you know, a show, I think it was, on, I don't know if it was on uh, the NBC sports or if it was on NHL network or whatever, but they're showing highlights of fights. And I'm like, well, what the hell you think's going to happen with kids when these are the highlights you're showing them? I mean, you're not, you know, they're not showing all great plays on the ice and skill plays. They're showing guys trying to beat the hell out of each other. And it's like, well, that kind of mentality is what you're teaching young people. And they think like, okay, well, that's what the pros are doing. I'm going to go around hammering guys like that. Maybe not with my fists, but, and you know you always hear you always see NHL players getting crushed from behind. You know you see that quite a bit, and you don't even get really penalties for it. You know maybe you get a boarding here or there, but I don't know. I just think that it's something that has to kind of come from the top down, and I'm not sure that the NHL has the guts to really do that kind of stuff. Now, doesn't the USHL have fighting? Yes, they do. See, that's and that's another thing. The USHL seems to almost have NHL rules. And then you're kind of like you said downgrading when you go to the go to the college game, you know, no fighting, you're wearing full cages or shields. So maybe it starts even at the USHL. I mean, they could they could easily make that change. Yeah, well, I, it's like I said, you know, it's going to have to come from the top down whether it's NHL on down or yeah. USA hockey on down or whatever, but to me, you know, it's become more and more about 
you know, these little video clips. And I mean, you see it, YouTube is covered with, you know, fight, yeah. you know, this guy versus yeah. this guy or Bugard's greatest hits or, you know, or, you, you know, and, and these are getting, you know, like you were talking about your views, they're getting, you know, five, six times that many views. And, and, uh, you know, like I mentioned, you see on national TV, you know, they're just, there's, of course they're showing goals too, but I mean, they're showing guys duking it out and whatever. It's like, you know, whether it's in a highlight package or, it just something needs to be done. You know, if you want to eliminate some of these dangerous hits, I think you kind of have to look at, you know, the violence in the game as a whole. I agree. I agree. Well, WCHA, I don't know. Do they have the balls to make these kind of changes? I wish they would. Uh, you know, maybe when we do get to the Big Ten, we'll have some different set of rules when it comes to that type of thing. Who knows? Uh, any other thoughts on the weekend? I, you know, not nothing that we haven't really touched on, you know, mm-hmm. and that hasn't been really discussed. I mean, it was, I, you know, last week I talked about, for me, the goal was to come out of it with a split and mm-hmm. kind of maintain where we're at in the national picture for uh, the NCAAs. And that's exactly what we did. So for me, you know, it was a successful weekend and the guys, you know, I don't think people should be uh, focusing all their attention on the pairwise after every game because we saw how that ended up on Friday and oh, everybody geez. was going freaking out about it but then the next you know the next day we win and we're back to where we were before so i I think that people need to chill out on that stuff game to game but you know nonetheless you know i think it was a successful weekend given uh where we started and where we came out of it well another wcha action we had michigan tech sweeping alaska anchorage uh really no surprise there is there i mean tech is obviously better this year and anchorage is Anchorage. Yeah, I mean, they, Anchorage has struggled this year. And they lost I mean, they their top scorer, too, didn't they? Yeah, they just, uh, yeah, I noticed that they had, I mean, not that he was a huge score, but, you know, nonetheless, it's still not going to help a team that's already a little bit deficient offensively. And, you know, Anchorage hadn't played in a month, so it's kind of, it's not really yeah. that surprising that uh, they'd come out and uh, get swept on the road. You know, they're a little rusty, probably. Wisconsin goes to Mankato and gets their first road victory. Of the season, and then follows it up getting blanked the next night. Split. You surprised about that? Because I'm not. No, not really. I mean, you knew eventually Mankato, you know, Wisconsin was going to break through on the road, and, you know, Mankato is as good a place as any to do that because they're their last place team. And, um, you know, Wisconsin has more ability on their team than uh, Mankato does. And, it's, you know, I'm a little surprised that, uh, you know, you kind of would expect that if, Wisconsin wins the first night you kind of think that they'd come back the next night and you know grab a few you know at least one more point but uh yeah to get blanked I mean that's not really a good rebound from you know their first road win so I guess that's the way it goes yeah Bemidji goes to Denver and gets swept I thought Bemidji might be a little better this year but uh it looks like they're going to be bottom third of the league well to be fair you know they've had you know a very a challenging overall schedule. I mean, this year, I mean, you mean it's you not a Duluth at, type schedule when it comes to the WCHA. I'm not touching that one, but, uh, <laughs> you know, they've had, they started off with a pretty tough schedule early on. I mean, at Miami at CC, you know, they had UMD mm-hmm. a few weeks after that. And, uh, you know, so they've had a pretty challenging schedule and at home they've had UNO and North Dakota. And so, I mean, they've, not played a bunch of weaklings and so to, but you kind of have to wonder, you know, they're not really a high skill team. And after at some point you wonder if all that, you know, competition is going to wear them down. And, uh, you know, maybe that's what we're starting to see a little bit, uh, with them going to Denver. Then we have St. Cloud splitting at CC St. Cloud getting a nice little overtime victory on Saturday night. But, uh, you know, I'm surprised St. Cloud kind of hung in there a bit. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, they're kind of a tough team to figure out. I know we'll talk about, you know, this weekend series a little later, but I mean, uh, you know, they're kind of a difficult team to figure out at times, and they have some real good skill guys. And, uh, you know, I think CC tends to, I think, uh, struggle a bit against teams that play, you know, similar to them. That's kind of how St. Cloud is. And, uh, you know, they're, they're uh, you know, kind of a skill team. They don't, they're not really going to, you know, they're not a grinded out type of a team. They're more of a finesse team. And, and uh, you know, I think that uh, 
St. Cloud's got some good, some good players, but they just haven't really been able. I mean, they've had departures and they've had injuries, and uh, you know, not to the level of North Dakota, but nonetheless, you know, they've had some stuff. And they might be getting a little healthier. I don't know when Mike Lee's going to be back, but that should be, I guess, pretty soon. And then you have uh, LeBlanc. You know, he's coming, you know, back probably in the next month or something like that. So. You know, they might be able to do a little, you know, maybe move up into that uh, maybe last home ice spot. You never know. And finally, we've got Duluth finally losing a game and splitting at Nebraska-Omaha. Obviously, Friday night, they kind of pulled away in the third. Saturday night, it looks like they just couldn't score. I mean, was it 44 or 45 shots to 15? I mean, basically 3-1 to one in shots against UNO. But UNO got it done Saturday night. Yeah, I mean, for once, you know, I mean, I've been kind of uh, ripping on UNO's goaltending most of the year, and uh, you know that here's a game where you know they got widely outshot, and uh, nonetheless, you know, their goaltender came up big and you know got them a win against the defending champs. So you, you know, you kind of have to tip your hat on you know to them on that, and you know, of course, you're in UND's shoes, you can't, you know, they had a huge streak, you know, for a while, and I've, you know, we've had those here over the years at times, and you know it's eventually going to end and um of course they got a pretty easy series coming up next weekend so they'll probably easily rebound from the loss but uh you know for them you just kind of want to stem the tide and uh but it just goes to show you you know that i mentioned this i think a few weeks ago that uh i always get nervous when my team looks like unbeatable for a decent portion of the year especially you know when it's you know first half to middle of the year because i'm always saying to myself all it's going to take is that one bad game, kind of like what you saw with the Packers this weekend. You know, it's just <laughs> you go into the playoffs, you know, the NCAAs, and it just you have one kind of off game where it's like nobody's clicking the way they usually do, and you end up losing, and you're like kicking yourself because you had all those wins in a row or whatever. So, I mean, I always get a little you know wary of that. So, I don't know that I'm not saying that's going to happen with Duluth, but I'm just saying that uh, it's something you always worry about in those situations. Well, this week there's uh, just a little fewer teams playing in the WCHA this week. We start off with Anchorage heading to Wisconsin, and they're right next to each other in the standings. Now, Anchorage is back quite a bit, but a uh, little cellar-dweller series in Madtown. Yeah, I mean, it, they might be you know next week or close to each other in, in, the, uh, you know, in the standings, but to me this series is – Wisconsin should sweep. I mean, like I mentioned, Anchorage had been off. They just got swept by, you know, Tech. Wisconsin's actually been, you know, pretty good at home. They're 9-4-1 on the year. You know, granted, some of those teams have been rather weak, but nonetheless, you know, they have a pretty good record at home, and they do have more, obviously, more skill, especially up front, and then they have, you know, on defense, um, they have some good players. So, I mean, I, I would expect this to be a Wisconsin sweep. I'd be very surprised. The only thing that, you know, might make – me wonder a little bit is sometimes you get caught looking past you know a weaker team to the following week and they've got you know they travel in North Dakota the week after that you know Wisconsin does so you kind of say well are they going to look past this series but I still think that Wisconsin will sweep I'm with you on that I think Anchorage is just spiraling down quicker and quicker each week um North Dakota heading to St. Cloud one point apart in the standings uh Obviously, you know, we really can't figure out St. Cloud, but North Dakota could be on the rise. You never know. I'd love to see him lose, but uh, what do you think? You know, for me, this is a really tough series to call. I mean, I had mentioned already about the injury stuff. I mean, we have two more players that might be out. You know, North Dakota might have two more players that are out this week. Um, I, I don't know what the status of Parks is, but, um, you know, you add those to the other injuries and, it's tough. It's tough to know what North Dakota is going to bring. And, you know, they just had a huge series against their biggest rival at home. And you don't ever know if that there might be a letdown on the road. Um, you know, on the flip side of things, you know, for St. Cloud, you know, is Mike Lee going to be back? You know, is, will that overtime win spur them on at home or are they going to have a letdown of their own? Um, you know, St. Cloud doesn't, you know, they haven't been good in the last couple of months. I mean, they have three wins in their last 11 games. So it's kind of a tough series to pick, um, but I I think in this case, um, St. Cloud played well enough at uh, CC for me to think like they're going to come out on top in this series. So I'm going to say that they're going to get three out of four points. Okay, okay. 
UNO heading to Mankato. Any thoughts on that? I mean, obviously, UNO is at the top. Mankato is at the bottom. Well, I should say yeah. UNO is not at the top, but they're in the top half. Of right. The game, so, yeah, I, I, you know, there, you know, this I go, you know, like I mentioned for, uh, uh, you know, being a letdown type of a series. You know, it might be that for UNO. You know, you go on on the road against the last place team. They just played a big series against Duluth at home, you know, you had the defending champs in your rink and you're all jacked up about it. And now you're going on a road and you're playing in front of a pretty, you know, stale environment, not a lot of fans and not very energetic. And, you know, you don't know what's going to happen. You know, sometimes those are the sleeper games that you, you know, you just kind of sleepwalk through and the next thing you know, you're, you know, you lost. And so, um, I do think, you know, the smart money says that, uh, Omaha is going to sweep. And that's probably what I would go with. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, something happens and Mankato pulls one out. It wouldn't shock me. And finally, we've got Colorado College heading to Mariucci to play the Gophers. Um, looks like Minnesota leads that overall series 160, 84, and 7. And over the last 10, Minnesota is 6 and 4 against CC. And actually, they've won the last four games against Colorado College. It's like both games are on FSN this weekend. I know that plus stuff, and obviously Friday's or Saturday's game will be 5 p.m. as part of the whole Hockey Day Minnesota. So, what are your thoughts on this series? You know, it'll be interesting. I mean, we we uh, you know, it's kind of a mirror image in a sense of offense. I mean, we're talking about uh, the number two and number three uh, scoring teams in the country. So, obviously, you would expect it to be kind of one of those up and down racehorse hockey games, you know, or series in this case. Uh, so you kind of expect something like that. Uh, you know, it's probably the cliche, you know, it comes down to special teams and goaltending. Uh, you know, the one major difference that I noticed is CC's, you know, defense, uh, they've given up, you know, not quite a goal more per game than the Gophers, but uh, 2.95 goals a game to, you know, 2.12 for the Gophers. And, you know, so they, you know, defensively, they're a little bit more porous in that sense. Uh, I think some of it is, uh, you know, they had some goaltending issues with Howe early on. And uh, this one, I think it's Thornbert, I think is how you say his name. Uh, you know, he's seem, seemingly solidified their uh, goaltending. So maybe that will help them kind of lower their goals per game uh, against. Um, CC doesn't take many penalties, so the power play opportunities might not be as abundant for the Gophers. So you kind of have to, I think, play – you know, better five on five. The Gophers, you know, have done pretty well in that sense. So, um, it's hopefully they'll continue that. But I think five on five will be important. Um, and you know, the penalty kill. You know, CC's got a pot- you know a potent top line with uh, Schwartz brothers, and uh, so you kind of have to limit their opportunities. You know, with a you know man advantage. So you you know we've been kind of over the you know course of the season taking a lot of penalties so hopefully you know we'll be able to limit that i, I don't expect this will be a more physical series um because they you know it's more of a skating series mm-hmm. so hopefully that means the gophers you know aren't going to be taking as many penalties as they've kind of taken in some other series so um it's, i honestly think that this is a series the gophers um i'm going to pick them to sweep okay i mean I, I do believe CC certainly is a good team and have the capability of, you know, taking a game at Mariucci. CC has a losing record um, on the road in the league, so it's not you know outrageous to, to expect your team to come out with more points than them on the road. You know, when they're on the road, and uh, I just think that our goaltending. I think that you know this last game. My hope is that you know it's going to kind of spur them, kind of like uh, you know that that last game that we played in North Dakota at Mariucci kind of sucked some of the life mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. out of the team. I'm kind of hoping that this win, at, you know, at North Dakota where we pretty much controlled the game, I'm kind of hoping that that spurs them on, you know, moving forward. Like, so I kind of, I'm hoping, I'm well, hoping I'm thinking it's going to be a sweep, but, um, you know, you can't be etching that in stone, certainly. CC's a good team. Well, another key to this weekend is it's the only time we face Colorado College this year. Um, they're only four points back. They're they're right there, you know, challenging, you know, us and Duluth for the lead. So I think it's key that they either get three or four points this weekend to put Colorado po- College behind them. You know, have the tiebreaker, put them away in points. I think that would be the most ideal situation. 
Yeah, I mean, I agree. It's very important uh, that, you know, you come up, I mean, you know, you talk about pairwise and things like that. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's very important, I think, to um, you know, come on top of the series. And plus, they're only four points behind us in the standings. You want to make sure that you, uh, you know, kind of keep that gap. I mean, you, you want to be in the top two, um, you know, if you get to the final five, you want to yeah. be in the top two. Yeah, I so, definitely you know, you get that two. you get that buy, you know, for – at first night. So it's very important to make sure if, even if you're not going to win the league, uh, you want to be in the top two. So yeah, it's an important series. Definitely important series. So let's look at some feedback now. Let's, uh, I got, I know there's a few questions coming in. I know a lot of people are wondering about some recruiting news. Um, we got Lars Suave wanting to know with Shea and Riley lined up for next year and no senior defenseman on the roster. What's the plan? you know, depending on possible early, early departures. Well, as far as I know, you know, they're both coming in, you know, and I, okay. you know, I haven't heard otherwise um, that they're going to, you know, hold any back. I mean, you have to figure, uh, you know, Shay, he could be a first round pick. I mean, he's that first, second round kind of an area and, you know, he's a very talented, very good skater, you know, good size. And, you know, he's not the kind of kid you say, Hey, you know, go off to the USHL for another year, you know, and Mike Riley has already been drafted, you know, and, uh, and you just kind of, I, as far as I'm aware of, they're coming in and I really expect that to be, you know, a major strength on the team next year is the defense, because, you know, like uh, the person pointed out, they're not expected to really lose anybody. And you're getting all these guys, you know, with another year of experience and, uh, and, you know, you bring in two very talented players, and that should definitely be a very strong point of the team next year. And uh, it's going to be a definite battle. You know, some guys that you see in a lineup this year might not be in a lineup next year. So, you know, there's going to be, you know, some of these guys are going to be battling. And I kind of like, I want to see that. You know, I you see glimpses of some of these guys, you know, like Hall and and whatnot. You know, it seems like, oh, God, what do you do that for? But then there's other times he, he does, like, really smart things with the puck and, you know, the same thing with some of the other players, but maybe if they get pushed a little bit more next season, it, they'll up their game even more because right now, obviously, they're just not getting pushed. Yeah, I mean... Unless there's know, an injury. I, I mean, there's nobody back there. Yeah, I mean, I have been frustrated, you know, with a few of the defensemen this year. I mean, you understand that most of them are younger underclassmen, so, you, you know, especially, you know, a kid like... Ben Marshall, I mean, he's a freshman, and he understands that there's going to be bumps in a road with a first-year guy at times. And so, um, but for me, you know, some of the guys that, you know, have been around, you know, especially like a, a Hull and and, a, and definitely Helgeson, you know, those two have been frustrating for me at times. So, I mean, uh, those guys need to step up. And uh, But, yeah, I really think it'll, it's going to be, a, you know, a real, you know, battle to get playing time, you know, for some of these guys next year. And, uh, cause you know, these are a couple of real talented guys who are going to be coming in. Um, I have another question. Um, Hammy, are there any incoming recruit grinders or are there any high end skill guys coming in? I think we are missing Grant Patoni types who stand in front of the net and gets their, you know, their nose dirty. Although they think Ambrose may be the next guy to do this. This is from frozen four champs. Do you think, do we have any guys that are kind of grinders that can, Make things happen. Uh, if you're talking up right, what we have lined up right now at, at forward for next year, we really, you know, we don't have one of those prototypical guys that are coming in the next recruiting class. Now, that being said, I know that they're um, looking at some players that kind of fit the bill. I heard, you know, a name, a USHL player. Um, I don't want to say who, but it, uh, I heard of, you know, one guy who fits the bill you know, he's a little older. He's a, you know, big kind of physical kid. And, uh, he, you know, he could fit the bill. I know they're looking around for that kind of guy to add to the mix. Um, maybe, you know, one or two guys, I don't know, you know, exactly what their plan is with that, but they're definitely looking for that. I mean, they, if you look at their recruiting for the next couple of years, I mean, they've obviously got, you know, the, the kind of smaller, real super skilled guys, they've got that lined up, you know, um, what they're kind of need to fill in the blanks with is some guys that are, you know, going to throw their weight around, be a little more physical around the goal and, and, you know, get the pucks, you know, out of the corners to the, you know, point in the skill guys or whatever it might be. And, and uh, 
that to me, from what I understand, is kind of what it, where the focus is right now. And I know they're looking at players like that. So I, I suspect that we'll see some additions yet that might fit that bill. Okay. How many or when, we'll see. But I think that we'll see that. Question from Twitter from Minnesota State of Hockey. My question for Hammy is, whom, in his opinion, are the Gophers' top recruiting targets for 2014 and beyond? Yeah, I, I saw that earlier today. And, uh, you know, it's a little bit of a challenge when you're getting to that far. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, you know, right now, I mean, that would be basically kids who are sophomores and younger yeah, and uh, we've seen so many times how kids, you know, from, you know, can peak real early. And then by the time they're seniors, you know, they're not quite what they were expected to be. And, you know, I have, you know, I really like the guys that they got in for 2013 because, you know, they've, they're smaller guys that are real skilled and they're, you know, proving that they've been skilled, you know, you know or that they're real skilled even when they're playing at these USA hockey events or maybe they're in the USHL and, you know, playing pretty solid roles at, a, you know, the age of 16 or whatever. And those guys, you know, are going to eventually blossom. And, but uh, from what I, you know, what I, you know, I mean, we've talked about uh, Shane Gersich and, uh, you know, I, I like uh, Jack Glover, who's a sophomore defenseman at BSM. Uh, I would say that for me, those are a couple of the kids that, I'm sure that the Gophers are keeping a real close eye on uh, Tyler Sheehy from uh, Burnsville, sophomore forward. Um, Dylan Malmquist, he's a freshman at Edina. Uh, Jack Ramsey, who's Mike Ramsey's son, you know, the ex-Gopher and ex-Wild coach. Uh, he's a sophomore at Minnetonka. Um, you know, if you want to look a little older, you, um, Dom Toninato, uh from Duluth East, I've heard his name thrown around a little bit. Um, you know, there's going to be some guys, but, you know, if you're talking real young, it, you know, it'll play out probably after this next summer, especially when they see him play at, you know, these national events again and see how they're kind of stacking up. And, um, you know, they'll look at him. I, I'm, I'm assuming, you know, the, the – uh, ND uh, or NTDP, you know, uh, tryouts, the USA team tryouts will be in a few months. And so, you know, we'll see how it goes. But, I, you know, those are some of the names that I would probably keep an eye on. Uh, another question from Frozen Four Champs here. Are any concerns that Boyd has not scored a goal yet this year? He had a great camp in Washington. So do we have any fear that he may want to go to Canada? Should Lucia replace Matson on the number two power play unit with Boyd in an effort to get him going or – you know, what should he do with it? No, I don't think it's a real concern because, you know, first of all, you have to remember that Boyd accelerated his education to get here early. And so he's, you know, very, you know, very young. I mean, he's, uh, I don't even know if he's turned, has he turned 18? I don't even know. I know he's, you know, he's 18, basically. I mean, he should be a high school senior, essentially. And so, you know, you're not really expecting a guy like that, you know, to come in and just light it up. And plus, you know, he's been playing essentially a fourth line role and you're not expecting those guys to kind of light it up. And, um, you know, so I think for what he's done, you know, I, I've been impressed with how he's played for the most part. I, I, I really like that. his effort. I really think he busts his butt out there. And I also think he's got some pretty good stick handling skills. He's been a little snake bitten here and there, but I'm kind of with you. I kind of like what he's done out there, even though he hasn't scored. Yeah, I think he'll he's going to turn into that kind of a player probably, you know, the you know, the second half of his college career. Yeah. Um once the opportunities open up a little bit more and and he gets a little bit more maturity, but um yeah, for right now I, I like how what he's brought to the table and uh you know, he actually only lives uh, or his parents at least only live like a few blocks from where I grew up and so, you know, he's kid I'm relatively familiar with and I don't see you know I don't foresee any problems there I think that he's done a solid job and uh you know I, I think he has got a good future ahead of him just another question from a Dan Caravo um is there any word on the white jerseys with the gophers written on the front and I hate to tell you Dan but we have not heard a thing as far as we know the university or the you know gold country has no plans to get those going but uh Maybe I'll look into it a little more this weekend. You haven't heard anything, have you? Are you kidding? Yeah, I don't even know. Exactly. <laughs> I don't pay any attention to the, to the uh, <laughs> uniform and all that kind of stuff. Uh, obviously, it, I think it's kind of a huge mistake by the U because I, they're pretty nice-looking jerseys. But uh, there's nothing else we could say until we hear something. And if we ever hear anything, and right now it's not looking good. So what's up? What, you, you think uh, – 
Michelson might be making some changes here? You know, I don't I, I don't know. I mean, you know, it's just rumor mill stuff or whatever. But for me, it, um, you know, it's like I mentioned earlier. Sometimes you see these kids at, you know, 10th grade and you're like, you know, they're looking great. You know, I mean, he had a very successful, you know, sophomore year at Apple Valley. And he's been a good player for a while. And he's definitely got elite speed. But, you know, he's not producing in the USHL. I don't know what, you know, his scholarship amount is, but I'm sure it's a decent amount. And, you know, he did flirt with the idea of, you know, last summer of playing in the, in, uh, the WHL, which is Canadian Major Juniors out west. And uh, so, you know, it wouldn't shock me. I'm not saying it's going to happen or whatever, but it wouldn't shock me if, you know, the Gophers say to him, hey, look, you know, you're not, you know, we're not seeing the progress here. You know, we, we should probably delay your, you know, your entry into college, you know, another year. And, and uh, you know, and it might, of course, depend on where he's drafted to, you know, in the next NHL draft. And I mean, his stock has dropped a lot. And so you kind of say to yourself, you know, if he's flirted with the idea once and if the Gophers say, hey, you know, we're not, you know, ready to bring you in here because of what we've seen, he might just say the hell with it. You know, I, I'm not saying he will or, you know, I'm, not, I'm just saying that it wouldn't shock me. I, I'm not saying it, it will, though. Anything else on the recruiting front since uh, you're kind of solo today? Uh, you know, not too much. I I know that uh, the uh, the hot name that I've heard lately uh, has been a defensive player for Edina named Parker Reno. I think that, you know, most fans are aware of him. I uh, had a knee injury last year, so he didn't play, you know, during the high school season. I think he heard it in the elite league. And uh, a lot of teams are apparently, you know, looking hard at him. Uh, I've heard at least, you know, half a dozen teams. And it uh, sounds like he's one of the, you know, he hasn't scored a lot, but he's one of those guys that got already have good size and skating ability. And uh, so it's something to keep an eye on. It uh, sounds like the Gophers are involved there. So that might be one to look out for. And uh I just noticed on Twitter, um, Brad Schlossman is saying that uh, UND's recruit uh, Luke Volton is um, not at the national team development program anymore and should be looking, is going to be playing in the USHL. And uh, that's pretty interesting because he's a pretty good player. And uh, that tells me that there probably was some sort of a disciplinary thing going on there. Okay. Um, so interesting. Definitely. Um, any other thoughts? What do you th- okay? What are your thoughts on Hockey Day in Minnesota? Do you like that? Yeah, I really do. I mean, I, it's unfortunate that the uh, the game's not going to be played outdoors. You know, the high school stuff mm-hmm. isn't going to be outside this year. I mean, that's kind of a bummer because that you know you don't really. That's the one thing if I personally look forward to yes. the most about that day is just seeing them out on a lake or you know a river pond, whatever it's you know particular you know is going to be that year, but. Uh, you know, it'd have been nice to see a game on Lake Minnetonka, and you know Duluth East is a really good team, and Minnetonka is a really good team. We were talking, you know, a couple of the top, you know, two, three, four, five teams in the in high school hockey this year, and uh, that'd have been a great thing to see outside. But nonetheless, you know, it'll still be a great game, and um, you know, then you get the Wild and the Gophers, and I know that a lot of uh, the other D1 schools in the state always bellyache if the Gophers <laughs> aren't playing, you know, one of their teams, and. You know, I, I kind of say to myself, you know, it's not Fox Sports North's doing, you know, I mean, they just they kind of have to plan based on schedules and they don't make the schedules for the Gophers or for whoever else. And it's whatever's convenient. So uh, I don't think they're intentionally getting screwed. So, well, definitely they're not. And obviously, you know, you've got the people in Duluth saying, hey, there's other teams. Why don't you show that? Well. Maybe they have a beef. Maybe, you know, if, if Duluth played maybe a noon game or something like that. But then it kind of takes away from the high school. And, you know, Fox, they've got the contract with the University of Minnesota. It's going to be that team no matter what. Um, and it, like I said, if they could schedule it with, you know, Duluth or St. Cloud, that'd be nice. I, I believe they have in the past. I think at least St. Cloud. But a lot of times, like you said, it's just whatever the schedule comes out. And they kind of pick that weekend and they just kind of go with it. Yeah, I, I don't really understand what the big deal is with that. I mean, I understand that you want visibility for your team, and if you're a Minnesota team, you feel like, you know, you deserve to be a part of the, the show, so to speak. But, um, you know, when you're trying to coordinate all this stuff, I mean, you're talking about different entities, 
I mean, you know, obviously high school hockey is going to be flexible, but, uh, you know, you got the wild and the gophers who have set schedules way ahead of time and, you know, who they play and all that. I mean, you know, it's, it's just one of those things where you kind of have to look at the big picture. And if that's how it is, that's how it is. I don't think that's anything intentional. Well, I'll be curious to see in a couple of years, you know, the Minnesota wants to start up that new kind of Minnesota cup type of tournament. And it's going to happen towards the end of January. Maybe that gets rolled into a Minnesota, you know, hockey day, Minnesota or something along those lines. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, you never know. And I, if I, now did I read correctly uh, in the star tribune that the Gophers have agreed to a scheduling uh, contract of sorts with Notre Dame? Yes. I think I read that. Yes. They're playing Notre Dame the next four years. So they played them once this year. Uh, Minnesota's going out there one time, I believe next year. I don't know why it's one game. And then they, the two following years, they play each other twice. So okay. uh, it's a four year contract. So they'll be playing Notre Dame. And obviously, Lucia is going to love that because he's going to be playing against his kid. So a little more incentive there. And. Well, yeah, and I mentioned this on GPL. People are, you know, talking about, you know, this rivalry going away and that and whatever. And I'm like, well, you know, there's only so many games. You know, you got 20 home games that they're going to play every yeah. year. And you got 10 league games, you know, the, on the road. So that's 30. And then you, so that basically leaves you with four games, you know, to play non-conference against whoever. And, uh, you know, when they're talking about, you know, Hackstall apparently was talking about, you know, oh, we're saving, you know, two games for the Gophers, you know, like a home and home. <laughs> us there. Good and, luck. And I'm like, yeah, I'm thinking to myself, that's to me, you know, and Lucia said, we're not going to be able to play everybody every year. You know, that's just a pipe dream to me. And, and uh, I, I don't see, I just don't see that happening. And uh, it's going to be people, you know, including North Dakota. I mean, I, I know this is going to sound arrogant, but it's going to be like, hey, get in line. You know, I, agree. I mean, you're, it's and I, you know, I saw some people talking about this on GPL about you know who we should play or who should have priority and um, yeah, I honestly believe that Minnesota and the in-state schools deserve the priority. I mean, mm-hmm. it's our. I feel. I mean, if you want to look at it from a historical standpoint with the Mariucci's or the Herb Brooks of the world, it's our responsibility as a you know to kind of grow hockey and keep hockey strong and. Minnesota, you know, and to me that means supporting the other Division One teams in in the state, especially you know a Mankato or or Bemidji who are, you know, they're going to be in a WCHA, which is will be all right still, but it's not going to be one of the premier leagues any longer. And so I think it's our responsibility to play those teams. And so I don't see where we're going to be able to you know be scheduling the North Dakotas and whatever else that often. I think one of the things I did here is like. You know, the year, you know, during that Minnesota Cup tournament, you know, there's only going to be four teams. And the fifth team that's left out each year will have a series with Minnesota. Now, whether that's a home or road series, I'm not really sure about that. I I heard actually it was going to be a road series for Minnesota. So I kind of like the way they're putting that together, if that's how they do it. You know, you got the four teams and then, hey, you're not in the tournament this year. We'll come to your barn that year. Well, and the bigger question for me is then, you know, how is that counting against the schedule? You know, as far as, you know, it's is this? I'm assuming they're playing at, play at like Excel. Are they they would about play at the something? tournament. I would be at the Excel Energy Center towards the end of January. Is, okay, is, so then what I have heard, and, right, I, and, and it so looks then, like the Mariucci Classic is going to go bye bye. Okay, so then if that's the case, you know, what? How do you count that in their schedule? I mean. You know, the Gophers are not going to want – I mean, I, I personally asked Maturi, you know, how many home games yeah, I know. are we going to have? You know, I mean, because we're – we have 20 now, and, and, you know, his answer was, you know, the same. We're going to shoot for that, and, you know, whether they can for sure keep that or not. I mean, I'm not involved in those conversations, but, you know, that's their plan. And so I don't – you know, if you're going to have this – you know, kind of event every year, then that's taking away other opportunities, you know, for potential um, non-conference. So once again, you kind of have to wonder where these teams think they're going to get the opportunities to see the Gophers. Well, it's going to be interesting to see how things change in the next few years, but 
pretty much right now, all we can do is wait and see what happens. You know, things will start to leak out, you know, next year, you know, what's our schedule going to be and who we're going to play. But right now it's kind of a hurry up and wait. And that's all we can do. Well, anything else, any other thoughts on this weekend, hockey day, Minnesota CC recruiting, whatever's on your mind. No, I think that uh, I'm looking forward to the series. I think a lot of the fans, I mean, now I heard Lucia talking. I do think it's a series that the, the fans really like because, oh, yeah. uh, you know, it's a, it's typically been a skill series. You know, it's a series where you're up and down the ice, a lot of skating, uh, good, usually pretty good flow to the games. Uh, you know, it's more about uh, puck movement and, you know, a lot of the extracurricular crap usually isn't there when you're playing CC. So, um, you know, in many ways it's kind of a – a little bit of a mirror image in some respects. I mean, I think the Gophers are a more physical team, but, um, you know, especially this year with some of their kind of trees up front, so to speak. But, uh, yeah, I I think it's going to be a good series. And, um, you know, I I do think the Gophers should sweep, but I I, I won't be shocked if we don't. I mean, CC is a good team, and, uh, you know, they've got some real high-end skill guys up top, you know, on that top line. So we'll see how it goes. Well, CC's always been one of my favorite teams ever since, you know, when they came in number one and Minnesota was like number two or number three back in the Crowley days. That's yeah, the, I remember that, that. that series really kind of seemed to, you know, CC was really on the rise with Lucia back then and Minnesota was up there. And I think that really kind of was the beginning of the, uh, of the love for me for the CC teams. I, I really like the way they play. They're obviously they're well coached and it's always exciting hockey. So I'm definitely looking forward to this weekend. Yeah, I remember that uh, Crowley, didn't he score a backhanded goal against That CC? backhand yeah. goal, he kicked it to his stick, you know, the pass from Rasmussen, and uh, the patience that kid had just standing there. The goalie just looked foolish. <laughs> yeah, I remember, you know, that was some that was some fun times. That was maybe the loudest that Mariucci ever was that I recall because that was just quite, quite the game. Of course, you know, CC came back the next night and did uh, – get the split. So uh, since then, I've been a big fan of their, uh, of the series with CC. So I think that just about does it. Huh, Hammy? Sounds good. We lasted much. Congratulations, Cardinal. Oh, definitely. We lasted a lot longer than I thought we would. I thought this would be a half hour podcast and we're pushing an hour here. So it's time to shut her down. And I'm sure the people listening want us to shut it down. Remember, you can always follow Hammy on Twitter at Hammy hockey. And, uh, you can always follow Gopher Puck Live at Gopher Puck Live on Twitter as well. And if you want to follow me, I don't think there's really a reason to, but uh, look for Fat Planet. <laughs> don't know what the status is with Cardinal. Um, I do believe he's having Jeff write for him this week, but uh, who knows? He may be on with PA. I'm guessing he may find time for PA to do his little radio thing. So make sure you listen in Thursday uh, on KFAN. That does it for the GPL podcast. We'll see you next week when we'll uh, review CC and uh, preview St. Cloud State. Thanks for listening. <laughs>